Outside the Box Reviews, we are taking a look at the Soda Toys Land of the Dead Butcher figure. This is one of the three zombies from the Land of the Dead line from Soda Toys. I had previously reviewed the Machete Zombie, the one that I wanted the most out of the three, just because it was Tom Savini. But I enjoyed that figure and I wanted to round out my zombie collection with the other two zombies from that line. Land of the Dead may not be everybody's favorite Romero zombie flick, but I kind of have a soft spot for it. I had a great time when I saw it in theaters, and still I do enjoy watching it, though not quite as much as the first two, though I probably would actually consider it on par with Day of the Dead. For an accessory, we have a nice bloody meat cleaver here for the butcher, living up to his name. I love the blood splatter on this. I've talked about this on a few other reviews where some companies have a hard time getting realistic blood splatter on a piece, but here we have what looks like almost the ring where it would have made the impact with his victim and then just a great splatter coming off of it got a hole up there at the top of the blade similar blood splatter on the other side and the handle is nicely detailed but we do get some paint rub on there it's actually paint rubbing off the hand onto the blade which kind of sucks but beyond that it is nicely detailed we even have the silver going down the back edge of the handle there which is really nice attention to the detail just like with the other land of the dead figures in this wave he comes with a couple build a corpse pieces so here we get the torso of our corpse we could see the inside here. You could probably make out a couple organs coming out of the bottom. We have the spinal column kind of drooping off to the side here. Both arms have been removed, though this one does have a socket, so we could eventually peg one in there. You see the broken bone and everything, the torn off head as well, but the shirt itself does have some nice detail too. The buttons and pockets are well sculpted, and it's overall just a very cool zombie accessory. Along the same lines, we get this torn up leg. This I'm a little less enamored with. I don't think it came out quite as as well. The shoe looks really good. Some good sculpted detail on there. The lower part of the pants look plain and normal. Then we get up here and it starts getting all nasty. We have the pants torn away. You can see the leg with a big bite taken out. Get the bone sticking out the back there. The pant leg torn open so this would technically rest on the ground and you just have the zombies tearing into this part. However, whatever's going on here with the plastic, mine is like perpetually gummy. It's just a very sticky piece no matter what I do with it. So I don't really know what's going on with the plastics or paint they used on here but it doesn't feel quite right and then from starting around the knee up there's a gloss on the pants but it's not a bloody gloss it's just kind of a gloss there's little bits of red you can see on the back here but overall it doesn't look like a bleeding wound it just looks like it's wet and then last but not least we get some intestines they're pretty cool looking they match a lot of the rest of the sculpt as far as gore goes some good paint shading in there and it's very similar to what we got with the savini machete zombie it almost looks like they should be able to connect together somehow to make some bigger lump of guts. I was just having a conversation with somebody the other day about how soda figures are almost a little underrated. The quality of these pieces as far as the paint and sculpt and even the articulation is pretty much on par with what NECA was doing at the same time. I think they did a really nice sculpt here on the Butcher. I like how they kind of gave him two different looking eyes to make him look all zombified and messed up. There's a great black wash going all through the face highlighting all the wrinkles and indentations. His teeth are really nasty and gross in there. Side of his face looks like it's been clawed out a little bit. His hair has some nice detail in it, some different shades of color, some browns and whites mixed in with the gray to really bring out the look of it all. And even on this side of the head, we have a nice blood trickle coming down from his temple. However, once we get past the face, the neck's a little lacking. It's a very bland looking neck. It's painted to match the face, but the lack of zombification kind of makes it look like it's part of a different figure. We do have the teeth shirt down here at the front you can see the collar sculpted on there it looks like some of that gray paint is also on his neck there which is a little odd we have the apron going around his neck coming down in the front now, this apron isn't really a soft rubber it's not removable just stuck on the figure very similar to what we got with the McFarlane leather face some good detail on the shirt underneath we have the collar we have a lot of black wash all over the shirt highlighting all the wrinkles and there are a lot of wrinkles here we have the tie for the apron back here as well one issue I do have however is that the paint for the arms isn't quite as dirty as the paint of the shirt especially in these sections where the shoulders actually are so it looks like there is a very big contrast between the colors of the arms and the shirt itself but the arms continue that great sculpt a lot of good wrinkles in here not really torn up or anything which is kind of odd for a zombie then we have a lot of good gory detail on the hands here some sores on the back that look really gross fingernails are all jacked up and his right hand similar detail it's closed off so you can 
hold that cleaver. There's some good blood splatter on the apron. It's kind of darker and almost washed away looking like it's been there for a long time. He's been caught out in the elements. It's a little torn up here around the knee to give it that zombified look, but overall he's actually a pretty clean, in good shape zombie, which is odd. More of those wrinkles going down the legs and then his black shiny shoes down there at the bottom. And he does not have any peg holes to peg him into a display stand. For articulation, he has a hinge joint at the neck so he'll look very far up, very far down. We can rotate the head side to side, no tilt or anything like that, but a really good range of motion for an older figure like this. Pin socket shoulders so they'll go forward and back as well as out to the side. However, we don't get anything in the arms themselves. We do get a cut joint there at the wrist. The way it's sculpted it almost looks like there should be a cut joint here at the waist, but it won't move on mine, and even if it did, the apron would be in the way anyway. So there's no actual articulation down the rest of the figure. For a size comparison, here's the Butcher next to the Amok Time, Day of the Dead, Dr. Tongue, and the Mezco Attack of the Living Dead, Jake figure. And, well, they're all roughly in the same scale. I think Jake seems like he stands just a little bit shorter than the Butcher, and Dr. Tongue seems like he stands just a little bit taller. But if you're going for a zombie horde effect, they all work well enough together that I think it would look okay on a shelf. And it's kind of interesting to look back and see that three different companies handled three different Romero properties. Amok Times did Day of the Dead, Soda did Land, and NECA did Dawn. Butcher's probably not one of the most famous dead series zombie designs, but he is a pretty cool one, and he does play an integral role in Land of the Dead. But the plus side is, I think he works just as a plain old zombie. No matter if you're really into the Romero films, or if you just want some undead creation on your shelf, he's your guy. The other plus side with these Land of the Dead figures is they're still relatively inexpensive. I've noticed over the last year or so, ever since I bought the Machete Zombie, the price on the line has started to go up. I think they've become just a little bit harder to come by, but last I checked they're still not ridiculously priced and they're pretty good figures for what you're going to pay for them. So I do recommend the Butcher. He's just a really solid zombie figure. You're not going to get much articulation. He's basically an over-glorified statue, but that's not too dissimilar from a lot of the NECA cult classics figures. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, username Outside the Box Reviews. Also check me out on Facebook, link below. And until next time, when there's no more room in hell, the dead will review action figures on Earth.